we was a work as a team. Really, my husband, uh, you know, he was not like husband, he was like friend. Yeah, <clears throat> we had a good time together and uh, we was a work like team. We're really happy and uh, yes. Soft-spoken, gentle Rose Mapendo doesn't seem like the heroic type until she begins to share her story. It's one that's been documented in an award-winning film called Pushing the Elephant. Since the movie's release, Rose has been celebrated as a modern-day hero, someone who literally went through hell and lived to tell about it. On August 2nd, 1998, you know, the war began fighting, but uh, it was an announcement from the government, from the president himself, when he stood in the television with Machete, asking to kill uh, the Tutsi tribe who was in Congo. I did not come really true to my heart. It was me, because I am a Congolese. I never been to other country. I was so surprised when the government sent four police to my house. They were looking for my husband. When I took my husband and heading somewhere, I was praying. Just pray for blood of Jesus to cover my house. I really grew up in a Christian home. My mom was a strong believer, my dad was. And I had the faith, God will do it. When everybody was asleep, this is how the three trucks, four with the military, came to my house. It was a crazy when the, I heard the movement and I looked in the window, it was like hundreds of soldiers. I took my husband in the kitchen, put him under the bed, and they, <sighs> They put the kids, you know, they were sleeping. They took me without even shoes, with the baby in my hands and other kids. And they just they threw us to the truck. You never saw your husband again after that? You know, I left my husband under the bed. They separated us with the other men who was arrested at that time. And the third day, my husband, he gave up. I really <sighs> was a big second shock. How oh, my husband, he gave up. And when they, they came to say, who's the, Moise, the wife? They say, I say, I was me. He said, do you have the last word that you want to talk to your husband? And I asked him how you do that. He just turned, he said, don't worry, I am a man. I have to die before my family. I'm sure you miss him a lot. <sighs> Painful memories often bring Rose to tears when she tells her story. Like today, she finds the strength she needs to keep sharing her tragic experience. From there, um, from your home, they took you and the other families to uh, what they called a death camp. Were there moments when you, you know, you felt like you couldn't make it through, or did you, were you able to sort of maintain control through that time? The military was a guard 24 hours, seven days a week. There was a four during the day and a four during the night. And for that, I said, what is this? And I said, God, is it really God exist? And I said, I will take my life. And when I try to look at my children, and I say, God, my kids are still alive. How can I take my life? And when the kids are still alive, who's going to be there with them? And I said, God, forgive me. Let me die in your hands. When I was a prey, and I just say, fear God. I said, how can I forgive you when you don't forgive the enemy? When you don't forgive somebody? And I said, 
How can you tell me to forgive them? Look what they have done for us. Look how they done for our husband. This, you think they are perfect more than us. What we have done against you? And when I was a prayer that time, just remind me, Jesus praying against the man. And I said, you think his father answer him? And I said, no. Until Jesus said, Father, let your will be done. And God immediately said, God, forgive anyone. Begin to say, if you can forgive me, the word came from my mouth. Forgive everyone. And I said, God, forgive anyone. Believe in me, some people, they think forgiveness is the key. People, they think I survive because I am here, I was rescued. I will survive the day I make a decision for forgiveness. It's my honor to present the 2009 Humanitarian of the Year Award to Rose McPenna. I want to thank God and to honor him who saved me and my family and all the survival Tutsi Congolese in a death camp. The documentary about Rose actually began filming after she and all but one of her children had been rescued and resettled in America. The focus is on the reunion she had with her eldest daughter after being separated for 13 years. The film also highlights Rose's humanitarian efforts, including trips back to the Congo to counsel women affected by the region's ongoing turmoil. Why is it named Pushing the Elephants? What does that mean? All together we can make a difference when we're united. I believe unity is power. Anything we do, nobody can do alone. And I named it, they asked me, you know, what did you want the film to be named? And I said, they're pushing the elephant. All together, more hands is how we can push the elephant.